Fidelis Care offers quality, affordable health coverage for children and adults of all ages and at all stages of life. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. Call 1-888-FIDELIS or visit FidelisCare.org. Hello everybody and welcome to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Each and every week at this time we take a look at our local college sports programs. We begin this week with the honor roll of local college athletes brought to you by M&T Bank. At M&T Bank we're listening, learning and working hard to understand what's important to Western New York. It's what we've been doing since 1856. M&T Bank, understanding what's important. Checking in at number three, it's Devon Strachan, the first year goalie for William Smith Women's Hockey. She had 39 saves in a 1-1 tie with nationally ranked Connecticut College. Devon was also named ECAC Rookie of the Week for her performance. At number two, it's Brooke Fields of Roberts Wesley, and she passed the 1,000 point mark in her career. Fields, a junior averaging over 16 points a game, scored 13 to cross the threshold in a win versus Mercy College. And topping the list, it's Alexandra Leslie of the U of R women's basketball team, also passing the 1,000 point mark, and in her follow-up game, scored 31 in an 84-75 win over Emory. Leslie added 15 rebounds for the 22nd ranked Yellow Jackets. It's time now for our local college spotlight athlete of the week brought to you by Ralph Honda. This week's athlete of the week brought to you by Ralph Honda, where they've been doing it right for three generations. Visit their new showroom or find your next car online at ralphhonda.com. At Geneseo, John Decker has been leading the Knights charge this season, and Kim Bernson has the story. And this all comes in, okay? No matter how great an athlete you may be to achieve success, it's all about finding the right fit. John Decker is a senior on the Geneseo men's basketball team, but that's not where he got his start in college hoops. Just two seasons ago, both Decker and his teammate Justin Ringen made the decision to transfer from Dominican College, a Division II school where they began their college basketball careers. Uh, I mean, Geneseo is known for its great academics, so that obviously was huge for me. And I had, a, I had a couple friends who I played in high school with that went to school here and played on the team. So they kind of, you know, told me all about the program and how, uh, how close the team is, how successful the program is. So it just drew me to that. Well, when Justin got in, I thought it was awesome. And my cousin previously played on the basketball team, too. So I visited here a bunch of times and I fell in love with the school. And when I did that, I knew I had to come here. Uh, I decided before him, I don't know if I influenced him at all, but I must have, I guess. But uh, it's great having him here. He's a great player. He's kind of leading our team this year. He's playing great. So it was good for him to come along and join the, uh, join the trend. Though Decker led the Dominican Chargers in three-pointers and was the third leading scorer in the 2014-2015 season, he made the decision to transfer alongside his good friend and move forward elsewhere. When you have two high-impact players coming into a new program, it's actually the team that has to make the adjustments. Coach, when, um, when players like John Decker and Justin Ringer transfer to this program, what are your thoughts as a coach? <laughs> Change your offense to something that, that really works, and, and, and that's what we did. You know, we had just graduated an All-American, first-team All-American with Gordon Lyons, where we ran a lot of stuff for him and through him. But John and Justin are completely different players. They're perimeter players who really can score well, both inside and outside. So. Uh, when they came last year, we, you know, we upped the tempo a little bit, moved to shooting a lot of threes, and you know, so far it's worked out pretty well. Uh, for the returning guys, a little bit of a, you know, a, a slower learning curve because they were conditioned to do certain things and they did those things automatically, being trained to do them. And uh, but once they once they got it down, you know, I, I remember our first scrimmage did not go very well, but we got a lot better after that. Now in his second season with the Knights, Decker ranks fifth in Division III, averaging around 26 points per game. Even more impressive, he's coming off a season where he sank 91% of his free throws. You also have a pretty crazy free throw percentage. Who taught you that? That's just practice, honestly. We, uh, I have a shooting machine in my high school that I would go to for after school all the time and just practice my free throws, so from there, I guess. <laughs> His effectiveness on the court has earned Decker the title of SUNYAC Men's Basketball Athlete of the Week three times so far this season. He had a game-high 41 points against Morrisville back in November. What is it like being the go-to guy on the team? 
Um, I wouldn't say that, honestly. I mean, yeah, I'm averaging the most points right now, but last year it was Justin. Any guy can get hot at any time, and we just move the ball well, and who's ever open shoots it. So when both of you guys are, uh, are are playing in a game, how do you know when to dish it off to him and when it's your turn to take the shot? If I'm feeling it, I'm shooting threes pretty good, I'm keeping it. If I'm not, I'll give it to him, see what he can do with it. With a bright outlook on the remaining season, Decker and his team is on their way to achieving a common goal. I've yet to win a championship in college, so that's SUNY X is my only goal right now. Well, we're, we're sure hoping to you know, be right at the top. We want to qualify for the tournament uh, and, and put ourselves in as good of a spot as we possibly can. But no matter what the outcome, they'll sure have a good time getting there. Top five uh, pre-game songs. <laughs> well, uh, Mustang Sally is probably one of them, without a doubt. Uh, maybe, jeez, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Six, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. A lot of a lot of Motown stuff. A lot, a lot of old '60s, '70s things. Certainly some Marvin Gaye and uh, Van Moore, uh, Van Morrison. You know, stuff that I like. And players haven't complained yet, so we're okay. And um, I'm expecting you to sing now because you just said that you can sing. So. Let's hear it. I took her out. <laughs> it was a Friday night. I work alone to get the feeling right. I'm Kim Burnson with the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Good job. When we return, J.C. DeLass welcomes U of our men's basketball coach, Luke Flickertsy, into the coach's corner. And later on, Kim is back with our scholar athlete, brought to you by Dave. We've got that and more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. As we head to break, here's a look at the Nazareth Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Nazareth College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the Geneseo Athletes of the Week, brought to you by SUNY Geneseo. Welcome back and thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Each and every week at this time, J.C. DeLass from WYSL Radio is going to help us get to know an area coach a little better with the Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. The Fidelis Care Coach's Corner is presented by Fidelis Care. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. This is J.C. DeLass with this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner, and our guest this week is University of Rochester head men's basketball coach, Luke Flickertsy. Coach, you're in your seventh season as head coach here at the U of R, won over 100 games. What is it about coaching here that's helped you be so successful? This was my goal when I got into coaching. You know, I, I had a great experience as a student athlete at a high academic Division three institution, and I wanted to kind of do it uh, at a pinnacle institution like University of Rochester. And so the opportunity to work with true student athletes at, at kind of the highest level is, is what attracted me to this field, more so than basketball specifically. And uh, you know, I think we're able to do it at a very high level here. Who are your coaching mentors, the guys you go to for advice during the season and outside of the season too? I've been really lucky. I've had great mentors along the way, uh, starting with you know my freshman high my freshman high school basketball coach, uh, all the way through. So I still uh, rely heavily on my high school coach, uh, my current my college coach, and then every head coach I worked with when I was an assistant. And so each one of them has helped shape me as a coach. You know, I really uh, describe myself as an amalgamation of all my experiences with different basketball minds, and you know I think it helps really add some uh, diversity and some strength to our program as a result. When you're recruiting, is there a certain type of student athlete that you're looking for that you think will fit in here at the U of R? Obviously, at the U of R, we're, we're focused first and foremost on academics. So, you know, they need to be a good fit for us from an admissions perspective, and so we're looking for very high-caliber students uh, first and foremost uh, as a secondary uh, part. They have to ask, be really good at basketball, uh, you know, kind of scholarship level, and uh, you know, the combination of, of being that level of a student and, and that level of a player limits our pool pretty quickly, uh, but those are certainly where we start. 
You recruit nationally. I mean, you've got kids on your roster from all around the country. Is that the most challenging part, though, finding those kids all around the U.S.? There's two sides of the coin. I mean, it's a larger pool because you're dealing with the entire country, uh, but obviously uh, the type of student athletes we're looking for, uh, it's a much smaller pool. So, What's your message to the high school athletes who are thinking about continuing their, not only their athletic, but their academic careers at the college level? I think uh, my, my biggest piece of advice for anyone who comes through our door and wants to talk about playing basketball at Rochester is, uh, is to just focus on finding the best fit for you as an individual. It, you know, it, it's really easy uh, with all the numerical rankings and stuff like that nowadays to get caught up in what's the best school I can get into or what's the highest quote-unquote level basketball program where I can be on the team. And, you know, I think that's a little misguided. I think it's, um, you know, it's not necessarily um, the, the right way to go about the search because very often, you know, even if it's the best school, it might not be the best fit for someone uh, as an individual and where they're going to be happiest and enjoy their experience the most. And so if you're intelligent about the way you narrow down your search, you can really just kind of trust your gut as far as uh, where you think you're going to enjoy your experience and be happiest for four years. This is a, a close-knit group of coaches here at the U of R throughout all the different sports. I mean, you guys really get along much like a family does, too. Yeah, I mean, we didn't end up here on accident. You know, it's uh, like our student-athletes. It's a, a lot of like-minded uh, coaches who share the same values, who are trying to uh, achieve the same things as professionals. And really, first and foremost, uh, you know, we're concerned with our student-athlete experience and, and making sure they have a, a great, uh, you know, kind of four years here in college. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thanks, JC. And thank you for watching this week's Fidelis Care Coaches Corner. Kim Burnson is up next with our scholar athlete, and later on, hockey is still relatively new at Nazareth College, but this season the Golden Flyers are playing like veterans. We'll explain that and have a whole lot more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. Before we go to break, here's a look at the RIT Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the Rochester Institute of Technology. As we come back from break, here's a look at the SUNY Brockport Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the College of Brockport. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave, Digital Audio Visual Environments. Where can you go to get expert advice and installation on TVs, sound systems, and automation for your home, car, or business? Come see Dave. Digital Audio Visual Environment. Come see Dave.com. This week, we recognize RIT sophomore Anthony DeFeo as our scholar athlete. Anthony is a Hilton native and a starting forward for the Tigers men's soccer team. Anthony qualified for the 2016 Liberty League All-Academic Team this fall season for maintaining a GPA of above 3.3. He's also pursuing a tough major in the diagnostic medical sonography field. Nominated for his hard work on the field and in the classroom, this week Anthony DeFeo is our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave Digital Audio Visual Environments. Now with a look at our college calendar, here's Dave Yates. Here's our local college calendar for the week ahead. Today, U of R basketball hosts Washington University of St. Louis for a twin bill. The men play at noon with the women's game to follow at 2. Tuesday, the Geneseo women's basketball team hosts RIT at 7 in what should be a good matchup. Also on Tuesday, Brockport Hockey plays against Hobart at 7 at Tuttle North. Wednesday, the U of R squash team kicks off a big week of action playing host to Cornell. Friday, they host Drexel, and Saturday, Trinity comes to the Lyman Squash Center. Friday, Nazareth Hockey takes on Utica College at 7 at the Bill Gray's Iceplex. Also Friday, Fisher hosts Hartwick for women's and men's basketball, with Stevens playing both Cardinal teams on Saturday. And finally on Saturday, the Roberts Wesleyan men's basketball team plays Goldley Beacom College at 1 at the Voller Athletic Center. And now here's how some Section 5 alums are doing at colleges outside of Rochester. It's a segment we call Postcards from College. Anthony Lamb of Greece Athena put up games of 14 and 15 points in back-to-back -back wins against Harvard and Maine for the 11 and 5 Catamounts. Quinton Rose, formerly of Bishop Kearney, scored 14 in back-to-back -back games for Temple 
and is averaging over 10 points per game. Amy Hassenauer of Hilton is in her junior year at Holy Cross. She's averaging 4.4 points in 18 minutes per game. And Gates Chilai's Diana Johnson transferred this season to Niagara University from Davidson College. Johnson will sit out this season, but looks to contribute to the Purple Eagles next year. Coming up next, it's our honor roll of teams, and later on, the Golden Flyers hockey program is ready to take the next step. We'll have that story and more when the Fidel's Care College Sports Beat returns. As we head to break, here's a look at the Roberts Wesleyan Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Roberts Wesleyan College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the St. John Fisher Athletes of the Week brought to you by St. John Fisher College. Welcome back and thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Here is our honor roll of local college teams. We start at number three with Nazareth Women's Basketball. They beat Houghton College 50-47 to to start Empire 8, play 2-0. Sam Sorge led the way with 18 points and Samantha Peebles added 13 points and 12 boards. At number two, the University of Rochester Men's Basketball team is now 12-0 after beating Emory 84-54. Senior Mac Montague scored 19 in the Yellow Jackets UAA opener. And topping the list, Geneseo Women's Basketball. After the loss of another player to tragedy, they returned from the break to beat Elmira College 71-41 and fouled with a 19-point win over Brockport. The Knights are 11-0 on the year and 5-0 in Suniac play. And now it's time for our Spotlight Team of the Week. Nazareth Hockey is a program in just its fifth season, and it's ready to step up. Here's Bill Pucko. Nazareth is still a relative newcomer to intercollegiate hockey. The Golden Flyers program began just five years ago in the 2012-13 season, which ended predictably with a 6-19-1 record. When we started, the biggest thing was we wanted to bring in character kids. We knew we were going to go through some growing pains, and we, had, we wanted guys that, uh, first and foremost, had great work ethic and good character. And, uh, you know, I've been in at it a lot of years, 30 years, but these past five years, even though our record hasn't been the best, it's been probably five of the most enjoyable years I've had because of the character of this group. Things improved, and Naz actually had a winning record two years ago and recently scored what has to be considered a signature win a 3-0 shutout of number one ranked Oswego behind freshman goalie Michael Tilford's 25 saves in just his second career game. Is that something a relatively new program needs? It is, a, is something that you can say, we did that? I would say for sure, like, obviously Nazareth has had some big wins in the past, but in the locker room after the game, guys were saying they think it's the first time we've ever beaten a number one team, and that's definitely a big, pro, like a big step to help building the program into like powerhouse we want it to be. The Flyers' efforts the last three seasons have been boosted by a legitimate star, Dominic Gabay. Gabay led the nation's junior college scores at MCC with 38 goals and 50 assists while earning All-American status. MCC dropped hockey after that season and Dominic wound up at Nazareth, where he's been the leading scorer, averaging nearly a point per game over three seasons. I wanted to play junior hockey in the U.S., so I went for trials, and then I played a year juniors in Idaho, and then the coach from MCC called me, and it was pretty much my only option, so I came here, and then George talked to me during the season, and I decided to come here. He, he played here at uh, MCC before they dropped their program, and uh, he, he just fell in love with the school. He's a very good student, has done it well academically, and you know, it wasn't the greatest hockey that he was at, but you could see the skill level and the talent level when he played. And 
Um, you know, it's been a good match for us. He, he's been uh, probably our most gifted player in the, the three years he's been here, and we're certainly glad he made the uh, decision to come here because he did have other options. Nazareth hockey players come from 10 different states, while Gabay arrived via MCC from Slovakia in Eastern Europe. Well, it's a small country. It's even, it's, I think it's smaller than New York State, so it's not a lot big, but it's nice. It's always good to come back home, so. But, but, you know, what's it like? What did you like most about it? Or maybe some connections that you make from there to here? Uh, it, I think it's pretty much the same as here, like the weather and everything. So we have mountains. I don't know. It's, pretty, it's not that different than New York State, so. That signature win over Oswego came at a tournament in Vermont that saw the Flyers play both the number one and two ranked teams in Division Three. Right or wrong, in, in the five years I've been here, we've played probably one of the toughest schedules in Division Three, and this year is no different. We've played, I think, uh, five of the top ten teams in the country. And, and it may be a little too much, but I know our guys enjoy that. So we went up there and played Norwich, who's number two in the country, and at the time, Oswego was one, and we're very comp competitive. We're able to get a win in one of them, and, um, you know, I think it makes us better in the end. But, yeah, I do like where we're at. I mean, obviously, we'd like our record to be better, but, um, you know, if we can get some scoring, I think that's been our biggest uh, shortcoming. I mean, as we just don't find the back of the net, we generate a lot of chances, but I think that'll come if we continue to work hard. From the Bill Gray's Iceplex, Bill Pucko for the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fidelis Care, for making the College Sports Beat possible. We'll see you back here next week.